everybody, and welcome to Live at Five here at the Broadway.com studio. It is Friday, April 5th. I'm Caitlin Moynihan. And I am Ryan Lee Gilbert. And over there we got Eric King himself. <laughs> Hello, everyone. The King. The King. Eric King. Who do we have with King us today? Guys, oh. <laughs> you're in for such a treat today. We have Emily Bergel with Woo! us today. Woo! She's starring in The Ferryman on Broadway. She's amazing. She's show. one of the best. <laughs> yes, we love that show. Yeah. You're in for mm -hmm. such a treat. Yeah, and uh, before I kick you out to talk to her, we're going to do today's top five. <laughs> Honey, if I could turn forward time. Uh, oh, that's, oh, oh, that's, that's it. Oh, that's, that's it. it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> that's my lead in. Uh, no, The Share Show, guys. The Share Show is releasing its cast album, of Woo! course. Here are the deets. Uh, Warner Brothers Records is releasing it. You can listen cool. to it digitally on April 12th. Pretty much and the then, way. which is, yes, but, but you know, they still sell physical CDs. Um, and you can buy those on May 10th which is very exciting. Of course, um, the this, this show stars Stephanie J. Block and mm -hmm. Teal Wicks and Michaela Diamond as three different versions of Cher. So much fun. Um, it features orchestrations, arrangements, and musical supervision by Tony winner Daryl Walters. The book is crafted by three-time Tony nominee Rick Ellis, and it is directed by Tony nominee Jason Moore. Very exciting. I'm obsessed with the Cher show. It's amazing. I can't wait to hear all of these songs digitally. I don't think I'll be buying the CD because I would have no. nothing to play it in. That's very true. Yeah. <laughs> but very exciting. April 12th, digital, The Share Show. And we got casting for this hotly anticipated comedy. Oh, hotly yes. Anticipated. Hotly. So, yeah. yeah, we found out um, who's going to be in Best Will's world premiere comedy, Continuity. Continuity. This continuity. That's mm -hmm. a fun word you don't hear too often. But so basically we know that the show is making it its world premiere it at is. Manhattan Theater Club at New York City Center Studio at Stage 2. This stage 2. Stage Not two. to be confused with Stage, stage one. 1. No, Stage 2. Yep. And we just know it's coming this spring. We don't have any specific dates yet. Right. But we do know who is exactly going to be in the show. We know that Dar Darren Goldstein, Max Baker, Jasmine Bachelor, Rosal uh, Colin, Karen Connor, Alex Hurt, Megan Ketch. Congratulations, everybody, because you're going to be in continuity in its world premiere. Um, Tony Caitlin. nominee. Yes. Do me Rachel. Do what? Me, what, what is the show about? You know, I've read this multiple times, and I'm still not entirely it's a, sure. It's, um, a, it's a noodler. I'm going to read this because I'm afraid I'm going to get it wrong if I try to do it from my memory. Um, okay. In continuity, a sheet of ice sits in the desert of New Mexico as a mad eco-terrorist. Eco-terrorist. Yeah, that's what mm -hmm. I said. Plants a bomb in order to save humankind. Meanwhile, a film crew tries to get in one last shot before losing light. Wow. Wow. That is. You know, it's a comedy. Intense. It's supposed it's to be a supposed comedy, comedy, but when I read yeah. that, I was like, oh, yeah. did we get that wrong or something? No. I'm very intrigued yeah. by it, and I'm even more intrigued because Rachel Chavkin is directing it. Of course, we Absolutely. know and love her from Obsessed with her. Hades Town, which is this season, and, and the, the Great the Comet. Great of Comet, Gone but Never Forgotten. No. Um, but we knew, do know, oh, we don't know when it's, oh, oh, no, no, we do know. Begin previews May 7th and opening May 21st. And you only have until June 9th to so, check it out. Go check it out. And a rotating cast of actors has been announced for this London role. Yes, London is hosting a revival of Sweet Charity. Anne-Marie okay. Duff will be starring in the title role. And we found out who will be alternating. Its guest stars will be taking yeah. on the role of Daddy Brubeck in the show. And some interesting names associated here. Mm -hmm. um, of course, uh, Daddy Brubeck sings the, the t act two opener, Rhythm of Life. And Shaq Taylor, Adrian Lester, Le Gâteau Chocolat, Ooh. Beverly Knight, and Clyde. Row will be guest starring in the role and we don't quite know how it's going to work if they're no. going to sort of like rotate or alternate or if they're each going to come in for a little while um, and additional special guests will be announced soon so they're doing all sorts of fun things with the role um, this production uh, will open on April 17th it begins previews on April 6th and it is playing at the London's Dahmer Warehouse thank you very much nailed That's it right. <laughs> And these two Broadway faves has triumphed again at the Indie Series Awards. Yes, congratulations are in order for two stage favorites. I mean, yeah. let's be real and here. favorites of ours. Yes, yeah. Wesley Taylor and Alex Wise, they have been on Broadway a bunch. We love them, you know them. But they create, they co-created this web series called Indoor Boys, and it just picked up four Indie Series Awards uh, this week at the Colony Theater in Burbank, California. So it was this big 
fancy schmancy award show and they took home four major awards. It's such a good web it's series. It's really, it's and they incredible. Have so many Broadway people. So many, alternate. some of our faves are, yeah. all, you know, everybody who, who's anybody who's in it. It's a lot of That's like, right. oh, they're in it, they're in it. But basically they picked up, so Wesley and Alex won for best writing. Incredible. Krista Rodriguez, spoiler alert, she's in here. it. She won for guest actress in a comedy. Michael Kostroff, he won for best actor in a comedy. And the series also took home the top prize of best comedy series of the year. This is major. Congratulations, Congratulations. Indoor Boys. You can watch all 16 episodes, season one and season two, on Vimeo right now. And Jared Spector has conned two very special guests into appearing on his show. <laughs> I like that <laughs> That's one. That's right. Well That's done. Yes, yeah, so uh, Jared Spector has a concert coming up called Con Artist. Parentheses con and parentheses artist Ooh. is how they're displaying it. Um, this is happening April 15th at 8 p.m. Um, and Andrew Reynolds and Kelly Barrett, Aww. Jared's wife, of course, they are going to be uh, take, have a, appearing in this concert. Um, Kelly Barrett also very, we're, really excited because she's going to be playing Liza Minnelli in FX's upcoming mm -hmm. Fosse yes. Burden. Uh, you know who Andrew Reynolds is. He's currently okay. starring in Showtime's yeah. Black Monday. But, you know, Book of Mormon, Falsettos, Falsettos of course. Hamilton. Um, con artist is described this way will feature Spectre singing a select group of songs from some of America's most iconic entertainers all while illuminating his journey from a six year old star search contestant oh, I forgot, I about, forgot that, about that who channeled Bobby Darren to a theatrical career built on transforming into legendary rock stars and that is absolutely what it's he true. does you can currently see him in the Cher show yes. on Broadway of course um, there are a couple of other fun things yeah on we the got site right now. What literally just went live was a really fun photo feature on Stephanie Styles and Corbin Blue of Kiss yes. Me Kate. Amazing. Paul did a great Q&A with them. Mm -hmm. The photos by Matthew Murphy are gorge, 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 gorge. Go yeah. check that out. Absolutely. And see Kiss Me Kate at Kiss Studio Me 54. Kate, yes. We also have a bunch of uh, photos from King Lear opening night. That, that was I your was, night oh, last night. Let me tell you, I feel like a whole new woman after talking to Glenda yeah. Jackson last Absolutely. night. Absolutely. It was a <laughs> highlight of my life. Um, and it. we'll have a video of that hopefully going up. That'll be up by the end of today. And then mm -hmm. we have photos. Go check it out. But Lots of cool don't stuff. do that. Don't leave right now. Watch our interview no. first. And then you can go. Yeah. Ryan, it's always a pleasure. I Caitlin, hope you have a thank wonderful you so weekend. Much. Thank you so much. You too, you guys. Let's hear about Emily Burgle. Yes. I'd love to tell you more. Okay. Emily Burkle is currently appearing as Mary Kearney in The Ferryman on Broadway. Her previous Broadway credits include Ah, Wilderness, Cat on a Hot Tin Roof, A Touch of the Poet, The Rivals, and The Lion in the Winter. Her many screen credits include Gilmore Girls, Desperate Housewives, Shameless, American Crime, The Nick, Southland, Taken, and so much more. Follow her on social media at Emily Burgle and leave all your questions in the comments below. Please welcome Emily and Caitlin. <gasps> Oh Hi. my gosh. Uh, Gilmore uh, Girls Gilmore fan. Girls stan. Obvi. Stan. <laughs> yes. Big fa we, there's a whole lot of Gilmore Girls stands in this office, but I am a huge ferryman stan. Emily Burgle, guys, she's here. How are you doing? Well, I mean, I'm in a hit Broadway show that people really love. I keep saying uh, it's the absolute perfect job. Mm. Now, if it was the absolute perfect job, it would be 80 minutes instead of over three hours. <laughs> Not that I don't want to do the whole, I'm just saying like, I don't want to be hyperbolic here, but yeah. it's pretty much the perfect job. Pretty much just try to shave off, maybe not have like the third, uh, you know, but it's all very important. It needs it. It does need it. I mean, I'm sure it doesn't feel this way as doing it on stage, but as an audience member, I felt like it went by in 20 minutes total. I'm sure it feels mm -hmm. a little bit differently when you're doing it on stage. Well, but actually, yeah, everybody says, everybody does say that. I've yeah. had some friends come who, Let's say are not exactly theater folk. Okay. And I, I don't I don't <laughs> tell them how long it is. And no. they tell me that when they sit down and and hear how long it is, they're horrified. <laughs> and a hundred percent of them say afterward that the time just flew by. It, it, it like freezes yeah, when you're it's at really the theater. Amazing. It's amazing. And because we there's three acts, you get a full intermission, you get a three minute pause. There's a pause. There's a little there's pause. A pause. So you don't really have time to do anything except for maybe stretch your legs a little yeah, bit. Refresh your just refresh, do a little brain, yeah. pick me up. But how long so how long has the new cast been? How long have you guys been doing it now? We started rehearsing uh second week of January okay. and then we had a month rehearsal, which is oh, really wow. rare. 
um, we had a whole company put in. As you know, after a Broadway show's run a while, they start replacing some parts and not mm -hmm. others. But apart from a few roles, we did a whole new company and a mm -hmm. whole proper rehearsal process. It wow. wasn't just like stand here, like go over there, mm. throw us up, yeah. uh, which I think was really valuable because uh, I think we had the same in-depth exploration mm. of this play that yeah. some of the other companies have had. Amazing. And we, you guys all joined in together, like what we said. What Did you see it beforehand? What was your first experience with The Ferryman? My first experience with The Ferryman was that I started hearing the buzz. Non-stop buzz. <laughs> Non-stop buzz that it was the most innovative, interesting new play on Broadway. Yes. And a friend of mine got tickets. Mm -hmm. And I love it when that happens because I try to actually learn as little as possible about a show if mm. I can. I like to see something with a completely fresh perspective. So I had no yeah. idea what was in store. What you're about to see. I was <laughs> destroyed. Obviously. At the end, I was absolutely <laughs> destroyed. Um, but in kind of a cathartic, hmm. ultimately pleasurable way, yeah. I would say. Um, and uh, just all, all the spectacle of it, I felt like I had almost gone back in time. Because huh. Broadway is so sleek now, especially mm. plays, one set, 70, 80 minutes, just a few characters. It used to be that people came to Broadway shows to see animals and yeah. babies and violence, and we have all that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got them all. You got babies and violence together. And violence. <laughs> so we're not going to give away any spoilers we because... Won't. You need to just experience it to believe it. But yeah, the last like 10 minutes of the show, what were you, how did you feel like emotionally the first time you saw it? I felt after the house lights came back up, I just looked around and all the people around me were acting normal. Like they hadn't just <laughs> seen a soul destroying 15, last 15 minutes of a play. And it was that thing where you were saying, how can you be smiling and talking normally amongst yourselves after what we have just seen? Yeah. And I, I will say, uh, even just last night, I was myself. I heard one of the, the children in the show scream in a way that I have never heard mm. before, mm. and it destroyed me. Wow. Um, I, found, I find that that especially the last moments of the play, to be just as powerful, if not more, after mm -hmm. doing it, I don't know how many times now, 50-something. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know, because my next question was, how do you kind of get through that emotional turmoil that does happen throughout the show? Like, how yeah. do you approach the show, or in a s specifically those mm -hmm. last, the last act of the, yeah. of the show? Well, I would say that uh, part of it is just going through it at first. Mm. Somebody told me once that uh, that any kind of art, but acting also specifically, is like giving birth. Mm. That you're, it's just, there's going to be some pain, no matter what. And so I would say that initially delving into those things did drive me a little crazy. Um, but as time goes on, I think you just learn to compartmentalize it mm. in that your, I think your, your body has an emotional memory, and so I just go through these fires every mm, night, but yeah. I, I don't have to bring them home with me as much anymore, mm -hmm. which is nice. It's very nice. And we are talking about a little bit of this off camera, how this, this is not your first rodeo. This is not your first play rodeo. It is not my first play rodeo. I'm You've glad to around. be here. Because yes. a, lot, a lot of people know me from television, and yeah. they don't know that I've done so many Broadway and off-Broadway and regional shows. So We're very lucky that we're, you are back in our little theater home. We're happy to have you. How did you decide to kind of come back to Broadway with this show? Or mm -hmm. how, did you, how did you approach it a little bit differently because you knew how long it was? Or what was this specific experience like coming to Broadway with this play like for you? Well, this was a unique experience for me thus far. Um, I have a daughter who's about to be two. And I took a lot of time off uh, after I first had her. And I did just mostly television because I knew it wasn't going to be a big time commitment. Mm -hmm. And I did say no to a lot of opportunities in the theater, mm -hmm. um, some of which because I would have actually lost money on babysitting if I'd, if I'd done it. <laughs> I love the not-for-profit theater. But, um, mm -hmm. 
And when the ferryman came along, I said, okay, this is, this is going to be the one where I, where I go back to work full time. I couldn't, I couldn't say no. Amazing. We're very lucky that you decided to say yes. Amazing. What was it like for you? You know, I feel like when you look back at your career and all that you've done, was you all, did you always want to do theater? Was that like your original goal or did you kind of always want to do like television and movies? How did you kind of navigate, you know, going back and forth between the two? I always, always dreamt of a career in the theater and I don't mm. think I maybe even thought that much about television and movies, mm. although... Wow. I, it certainly, certainly I wanted to do everything, but when I would think about my career, I would really think about the theater. Mm. Um, I moved to New York, and uh, I was an understudy at the Lincoln Center, and while I was there, I got cast as the lead in a movie, just this one of these fluke things, <laughs> in the sequel to, mo to the movie Carrie. Yeah. And I, I had never done anything on camera. I'd never even done a commercial, anything wow. professionally. And after that... I got a bunch of offers to do more horror type things. Mm -hmm. And I thought to myself, I'm at a crossroads here because I don't know if I really want to have a horror movie career, but I know that I want to have a career in the theater. So mm -hmm. instead of doing more horror movies, I went and I did Romeo and Juliet um, with this young television actor who was also just getting into the theater, Neil Patrick Harris. Hmm, wow. Well, yeah. What, yeah. Is, what happened to him? I don't know. That's kind of strange. Yeah. I've never heard of that name before. Yeah, I know. Hmm. <laughs> didn't really work out for him. No, it didn't. <laughs> um, and then I went and did The Lion of Winter on yeah. Broadway. So I think my my television and, and uh, film career are maybe a little bit more random, but I think that my theater career is something I've always carved out time Mm. And uh, and made time for I've, I've said it play every one mm. or max two years just keeps me feeling fulfilled and honestly I think it makes me a better actor I'm mm. just gonna go ahead and be a snob I just I just think you're it, allowed to be it real I think it does make you a better actor because you have to be a team player mm -hmm. and you have to do everything in the moment yeah. And we are truly an ensemble at the Ferryman. True. Mm -hmm. True. We're all there as as small pieces of, of a of a greater whole. Mm -hmm. mm. Amazing. Now I have to talk about. Oh, this sounds interesting. I what? have to talk what? about this these beautiful portraits Ooh, that were taken uh, by our very own Caitlin McNanny. She did character portraits with you guys, and this literally looks like it's a painting, and. And I I, that's not even, it. I don't think that's even really Photoshop. That's not no, Photoshop no, at the, all. No, not really. No. And I, I brought up that this uh, looks uh, very much like a depression era photo mm -hmm. of Dorothea Lange, which actually wow. was Photoshopped. She, she actually she photoshopped. She photoshopped the woman's hand for some mm. reason. She didn't like a finger placement. Yeah. So this is even more authentic yes. than a depression era photo because <laughs> it was not Photoshopped. And with, with I can't have favorites, but I do love Ryder. We love, I follow Ryder on Instagram, and you guys should too. He's an um, influencer. He's an influencer, oh, he's, baby influencer. He's a major, Ryder and the goose, Peggy from our show, post more on Instagram than I do. Peggy, I think her Instagram is like a star is born or something. A star is hatched. A star, pardon me, a star is yeah. hatched with a bunch of underscores, but it's iconic, truly. But I just loved these photos, and what is it like, because I feel mm. like there's, there's babies, spoiler alert, we know there's babies in the ferryman, but I feel like you and the other daughter, you guys kind of hang out with the babes a little bit more. How was, what was that like? Have you ever kind of, like in the theater world, have you worked with babies on stage before? I've never, I've only worked with fake babies on stage and it's driven me crazy because yeah. they never make them heavy enough and mm -hmm. I'm always like going to Home Depot and buying weights or bird <laughs> seed and trying to sew it into the baby. <laughs> So I didn't right. have to do that in this case. <laughs> no, you did not have to sew <laughs> bird seed into this baby. Yeah, no, these are they're they're plenty heavy. Yeah. Um, when I saw the fairy man, I thought that the babies on stage were m one of the most powerful parts of the play yeah, for me. Yeah, agreed. And it's not just because of the spectacle of ooh a baby, but when you see uh, <laughs> you're good. When you see um, these babies come out on stage, you realize. It's the purest form mm. of acting there is because they don't know they're on stage. Mm -hmm. They are actually in the moment, something yeah. as actors were just striving to be and they're just achieving yeah. it. So when I saw 
this, especially when w seeing a baby alone and vulnerable on mm. stage, I thought, wow, this is actually one of the most powerful things you can do. Yeah. So the fact that I get to be with one of the babies, mm. we have a new baby <gasps> now. Yay, new baby! We have a brand Welcome new baby. Welcome to Broadway. Mm -hmm. Broadway debut. Yeah. How, how old is this baby? By the way, these babies make full pension and health. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. That's the dream. They're like, what, like 11 months old? <laughs> yeah. I got an email when the show first came into town before I was in it. I got an email for my daughter to audition. <gasps> and I said, mm, no, I don't want to do that. And then I'm thinking, wait, like, should, should I have? Because yeah. that could have been like That could have been real fun. nice. Like, that's vacation. <laughs> no, you're, you're, thinking, you're thinking college, but Again, I'm like, let's go to vacation. Think of how much you'll save on babysitting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Oh, I just... I, love, I just had to bring Look at this photo again. You can see all the photos on Broadway.com, but it literally looks like a painting. No, these portraits, I, I, I've had so many messages from people. And it's so smart because so much of theatrical photography are these wonderful shots from the show, mm -hmm. but you never get to have something composed. Mm. And it really fits. I, I also saw her um, photos for um, True West. Yes. Which she just really knows how to get the mood of a play. Yeah. She's incredible. We love our photographers. Go check them out. I have been hogging you up. I'm sure we have lots of questions. Yeah. Eric, can you Stop tell it. us what oh, wait, people we have, like? We have fan questions I know. Now? I'm so excited. They're on the Facebook. They're all on Facebook. Okay. So you talked a little bit about how your, your acting um, careers in TV and film mm -hmm. and Broadway. How do you approach um, acting on television versus performing on stage? And, and, and maybe mm. even like, yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay. This is a great question. Um, that people ask me a lot. Okay. And I have, I think, a little bit different of opinion than other people in that, that I feel that there is no difference. Love that. Maybe there's a difference in scale in that I'm going to speak a little bit differently in the Jacobs than I would at, say, the Pells or mm. a smaller theater. But I, I think this is the one of the number one problems that young actors have when they audition for TV and film in that they've been told not to move and not mm. to be too big and not to be too much. I personally don't think there's anything as too big. Okay. <laughs> I love that. If it's supported and if yeah. it's real. Uh, I, For instance, uh, I was on the TV show Shameless for mm. a couple of years. I done things in that show that I could have filled a stadium there mm. so epic. Mm. And I feel that young actors are given a disservice when they're told, well, don't move and don't do this. You just, it's, you might have to focus your performance in a little bit, but I, yeah. I feel like I see a lot of young actors and students kind of frozen, frozen in time. And I, I think good acting is, is good acting no matter what. Love that. That is some good advice. That's good advice. Write it down. I love <laughs> I love something that goes against like the grain. You know, yeah. Love it. Um, okay, so Alexander would um, sorry, no no no. Alec <laughs> would like to know, did you meet any of the original British cast who left in February and what was like that baton passing like? Hmm. I well I have worked I worked with Dervla Malloy. Mm -hmm. um, from yeah. the uh, British company, right. we did a touch of the poet together on oh, Broadway. Fun. She played my mom. Oh. So I admit that I was disappointed at first that I wouldn't get to do it with her because yeah. she's such a phenomenal actress. Mm -hmm. um, I I'm a, a little bit of a nerdy baker, so in terms of passing the baton, I baked these little gingerbread cakes in the shapes of houses and left them for the previous actresses who inhabited oh my, my dressing room, and then no. they left us some whiskey, hey. which we are real happy about. <laughs> Very we just ran out, actually. Oh, wow. Well, you guys made that last. We did, we, we made I love that. That's little so nips. sweet. Yeah. That's so cute. Do we have time for one more, Eric? Yeah, sure thing. Um, so, Kari, Kari, K-A-R-I Long, yeah. All right. says, Hi, Emily. Best teacher ever. Are you a teacher? What do you teach? Um, I am a teacher, and uh, Carrie is one of my students. She just did uh, a wonderful scene from Savage in Limbo last week. Love it. Yeah. Good job, um, Carrie. Yeah, good job. Uh, yeah, I have some really phenomenal students. I started, I started teaching kind of randomly when I was pregnant. Love that. Uh, <laughs> and it turned out that I really liked it. That's amazing. You're just a woman of all trades. 
You can do it all. What can't she do? That's nothing. She can do everything. I can't dance. <laughs> oh, you wait, can't. Wait, no, wait. Uh, Unless you're wanting to cast me for something that has dancing in it, in which case I can She's totally the best dance. dancer I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah. I've seen her dance personally many times. I tap from the waist up. <laughs> <laughs> Put that in your special skills on your, uh, on your resume. No. Tapping from the waist up. Thank you so much for coming. I had a great time talking Ooh. with you. If you haven't seen The Ferryman yet, what are you doing? Go see it. And if you have seen it, see it again because mm-hmm. it's a brand new cast. They're playing at the Jacobs Theater through July July 7th. 7th. As of now, I'm just saying that. Please go <laughs> see it. <laughs> thank you so much, Emily. Thank you. Could you take us out, Eric? Sure thing. Okay, thank you guys so much for tuning in today. We are live at 5 every single day on Facebook. And if you like a podcast, we've got a podcast. So go and slam that subscribe button wherever you get them. Tune in tomorrow, um, excuse me, tune in on Monday when we talk to Sarah Styles of Tootsie. 